Now, the Food and Drugs Authority says all importers of finished pharmaceutical product can now lose their product unless they pass rigorous quality control tests before being allowed onto the Ghanaian market. Again, all imported glycerin and propylene glycol raw materials should be accompanied by a certificate of analysis. This is to ensure the product that do not contain abnormal levels of diethylene glycol and ethylene glycol, which have claimed 60 to 99 children in the Gambia and Indonesia, respectively. These were contained in a statement issued by Ghana's Food and Drugs Authority. Now, uh, so how has the FDA been allowing importation of such product in the past? And what specific product will be affected? Mr. Samuel Asante Boating is Director of Drugs and Herbal Medicines Registration Directorate of the FDA, and he joins us on Zoom with some answers. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. When you say finished you, pharmaceutical Mr. product, what specific product are we looking at? Yes. Thank you very much, and good morning to your listeners, viewers. Yes, when we talk about finished pharmaceutical products, uh, just like we did in the release, we are saying that finished pharmaceutical products that are ready for use in treatment of ailments. And we are saying that those ones that contains glycerin and protein glycol should actually uh, have certificate of analysis that shows the safety of the ingredient that has actually been used in formulating the finished product. Mm. Now, when we talk about finished product, we realize that we have what we call the active pharmaceutical ingredient, which actually gives the pharmacological activity of the product. Now, before this comes together, we have what we call inactive ingredients that are added to aid the functionality of the active ingredient that is in there. Now, we are saying that because of recent happenings and alerts, that we have received, we are saying that we need to be more vigilant, proactive. We should not wait for such product to come onto our market before we start acting. And so it's a proactive measure to make sure that we phase out these uh, products which are become substandard based on the inactive individual. Mm. Well, well, but uh, finished product, uh, f finished pharmaceutical product are a lot. If someone is watching now, how will he or she know what sort of product he should be looking out for? What sort of product are we talking about? Is it paracetamol? Is it, what is it really? Yeah, so we, we wanted to be, uh, our activity is going to cover broadly a lot of formulations. Now, for us, we know formulations that actually contain this inactive ingredient. Mm. Like you have just mentioned, paracetamol syrup is one of them. Okay. And most of our cough syrups also contains them. And therefore, by taking this measure, we are ensuring that all these pharmaceutical products that will either be manufactured locally or be imported from outside the country should conform with all these directives. So we are talking about liquid formulations that actually has this inactive ingredients that has actually been identified to be containing this diethylene glycol and ethylene glycol. And this has to be released before its use. Mm. Generally, the system is such that we call something good manufacturing practice. And the laws are that once ingredients are imported into the country, we need to first ascertain its quality before it goes into the manufacturing process for the finished product to come out. And so this we do already. Now the products that we have been alerted, that has substandard, has become substandard because of the presence of these impurities are not on our market and we don't have any such manufacturer in our database. But this is a precautionary measure that we are taking, that we don't wait until it passes through an illegal route or uh, supply chain onto our market. And so mm. that is why we want to be proactive and we are acting as such. Mm. I, I know we have the Pharmacy Council. How have they also been involved in this to ensure that all of you and all of the state, uh, all of us are aligned in, in, in one line? Yes, uh, we work in collaboration in a lot of areas. Now, the Pharmacy Council actually uh, regulates the practice of pharmacy. 
And we are saying that if we have an importer who certainly will be a wholesaler registered with the pharmacy council, they should conform or comply with this directive. Now, once they conform or comply, it means that the product that they are bringing into the country to distribute to the general public will be of a very good quality and cannot be deemed as a false number medication. So we are working hand in hand to mm. ensure that nobody buys anything that is wrapped in any black body thing, but then they buy from legitimate and licensed wholesalers and importers as well. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm grateful to you that uh, you found time to join us here on uh, uh, our news. And that's uh, Samuel Asante Bwati, Director of Drugs and Herbal Medicines Registration Directorate of the FDA. But how are uh, pharmacy or ph pharmaceutical companies reacting to this particular directive? Um, Farm Harrison Abutiate is the chairman of the National Pharmacy Chamber. Um, and uh, he has also joined us with more. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, how are your members reacting to this directive by the FDA? Uh, uh, grateful to you that you could join us, sir. How are your members reacting to this directive by the FDA? Well, I think uh, it's proper and they've accepted it. So um, those who are importers have been informed about what they should do before they could import those uh, items that the FDA is talking about. Mm. Mm. That's the diethyl glycol and ethylene glycol. Uh, and and, and uh, once they've been informed, what is that mechanism put in place to ensure that they are being, they are obeying the directive? Well, I think the FDA has said it, that if you import any of those items, uh, first, you must have the documents that support the analysis. And uh, if you don't, this will be done at the port of entry. Mm. And you have to pay for the, for the analysis and, uh, and, uh, uh, before they are accepted in. But you see, uh, these products uh, can cause problems if they are not properly used, like all other pharmaceuticals. And uh, uh, some of them uh, are degraded in the body. They are absorbed and degraded in the body. And um, they pass through the liver and the kidneys. And some of those products that are broken down can uh, damage the, 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 the kidneys and, uh, and also the liver. Mm. So we have to be careful. Uh, they've, they've been used as sweetening agents, you know, sweetness, because the taste is uh, it's very it's, it's, it's nice. So some of the manufacturers mix them in cough syrups and painkiller syrups mm -hmm. uh, just to uh, avoid using more expensive uh, products okay. uh, for, for making the syrups. Okay. All right. And uh, once this, yeah, when this happens, obviously, uh, you have you have a lot of side effects, and equip, especially the key children who don't have well developed organs, uh, they they can accumulate there and uh, and destroy the kidney, and they go through all the processes of side effects, okay. like nausea, vomiting, pain, and. All right. uh, Farm Harrison Abutiati, I'm grateful that you could join us. He is chairman of the National Chamber of Pharmacy.